Today I want to talk about going full circle as quickly as possible. Probably this is just another way of talking about lean. But the topic is so important that it's probably even beneficial to think about it in many different ways. Regardless of whether you are self-employed, an entrepreneur, or whether you are working for a company, I've come to believe that this is the single most important thing we should know as programmers. The single most important thing that we should keep reminding ourselves of and keep following. So let's talk about what I mean with going full circle. There are a lot of interesting and important concepts from Agile, such as being close to your customer and not putting a lot of weight on, on documents, in other words, favoring interactions and all of these different things. Please do check out my other videos on the Agile Manifesto if you're interested in that. But the way I understand it, the key point is really that what we're looking for is that we want to be able to deliver useful software as quickly as possible to the client. And the key point here is that what we're delivering is working software. We're not delivering working documentation. We're not delivering papers. We're not delivering specifications. We're not delivering images. The thing we're actually delivering is a fully functioning prototype. Something that is a fully functioning piece of software that doesn't necessarily do everything that the client would wish or, or want it to do, but at least does something. In other words, we bring the client something that has some value and isn't just a, a mock-up, right? Isn't just a non-usable prototype. And that's the key point. It's extremely easy to forget that we need to develop our software all the way, the whole full stack, right? From the requirements all the way down to the actual working software. And this is what I mean when I say full circle. It's very important that we close the circle completely and not just deliver, for example, a specification. So the reason I'm saying this is that I'm, I consider myself to be a person who's very fond of Agile and who, who struggles a lot or, or really, really tries to follow Agile principles and really tries to uh, deliver as quickly as possible, keep things as lightweight as possible and all of these other different ideas. But still, we found ourselves in this project in a situation where we spent a lot of time without actually delivering anything useful to the client. So. I have to stop and ask myself, how did we actually end up in this position? How did we actually end up in the position where instead of having a useful piece of software as quickly as possible, we sunk a lot of time into producing documents, even though I'm extremely fond of the idea of not producing documents, even though I'm extremely fond of the idea of keeping it agile, of going full circle as quickly as possible, of delivering working software as quickly as possible. The way I think about it today is that what I think happened is that I, and I assume other people on my team, were actually kidding ourselves. Un unconsciously, right? We thought we were going full circle when in fact we weren't really actually at all. So we thought we had went full, went full circle, found something that we could iterate upon, and then we kept on iterating upon that. But as soon as we came to a point where uh, we really started to push a bit harder, right? We tried to really close the circle in really trying to deliver the thing we're about to deliver. That's when we discovered that actually we had skipped a lot of steps. Actually, there were a lot of steps missing. And when we started to take those steps, we realized that there are a lot of things left that we have to do that are extremely costly which put us in a situation where we had gathered tons and tons of requirements and suddenly we were in this position where due to discovering that we actually have a lot of costly activities left, we started throwing out requirements. We started aggressively reprioritizing and removing some requirements because due to these new costly activities, we simply couldn't afford perform, performing all of the activities or meeting all of the requirements that we had intended to meet. And you can make of this story what you will, but what I make of this story is that I actually think that this was an extreme waste of time. Not just of my time, of other people in this project, right? It was an extreme waste of people's time and by proxy then an extreme waste of money because we've spent a lot of time constructing requirements that we won't actually build, probably never. And it just absolutely shocks me that we could end up in this situation given the sort of, at least the background uh, that I have, given the perspective that I have on software development. I mean, I can't help but to ask myself how I could have possibly been that blind. And this is why I'm saying the only rational reason that I can see is that I sort of subconsciously was kidding myself. 
And that's the reason why I'm making this video. I really want to caution you against not going full circle. And quite honestly, I really want to caution myself or make this as a reminder to myself to always go full circle because now I know that I've made the mistake and apparently it seems it was quite easy to make that mistake. In my case, this means that we spend lots of time, lots of resources, lots of manpower, lots of, by proxy, money constructing and refining and perfecting requirements of ideas that we never actually in the end used. We constructed extensive requirements and actually documents, even though the documents were lightweight, right? That's what, that's I guess what tripped me up because I was thinking that because the documents are lightweight, we have to be doing the right thing, right? Because I'm not producing extensive uh, requirements documents. But the problem was still that we were constructing requirements documents rather than producing working software. What we should have done is that we should have identified what the minimum product is, what the minimum viable product, what the minimum possible deliverable that we could construct is, and then construct that, focus our energy on that. So I think the problem here is that I think it's easier than you would imagine, at least it was easier than I imagined, to fool yourself that what you are constructing is the end deliverable, or is the format, is the shape, is the structure of the end deliverable, when in fact it's really not. It's really just a, a requ another requirements document that sort of somehow resembles a deliverable, somehow makes you feel that it is a deliverable. And this we have serious first-hand experience from, and, and it's again still shocking to me that we didn't do anything about this. We had a very difficult time getting stakeholder engagement, getting discussions, getting heated debates around whether the requirements are for fulfilled or not, whether we are missing things, whether we are fulfilling requirements, whether we are doing anything bad, whether we are doing anything good. We had a very difficult time actually getting these discussions going with our stakeholders, with our customer, our clients. And I would venture to say that the reason for this was that our stakeholders probably understood that what we had constructed wasn't a deliverable. It wasn't an early version of the thing that we're about to deliver, the software that we're about to deliver. But rather we had constructed arbitrary, I shouldn't say arbitrary, but rather we had constructed requirements documents, hypothetical ideas or models that we have put down on paper but hadn't actually implemented in software. They knew that we hadn't gone full circle. So it's my belief that because of that, they didn't want to engage with us. They didn't want to engage with the product. When we then really hustled up, really spent a lot of time creating that first uh, full circle deliverable, when we really realized that we were actually very far from that full circle deliverable, that's when suddenly it was like a, just everything dropped, right? It was, it was suddenly we had massive engagement from stakeholders. Suddenly people cared a lot. Suddenly we could have very useful discussions with stakeholders and discuss where we were hitting the requirements and where we were missing the requirements. All because we had now actually gone full circle and we could actually talk about the software while actually looking at the software. And I think the, the, the thing that was really tricky with our scenario is that because we're working with simulation and because we were working with non-visual simulation, we couldn't necessarily show the, the, the program running to our stakeholders because the program wasn't necessarily visual, it didn't necessarily have to be visual. And we, for reasons of speed, we didn't want to spend time constructing visuals. But <laughs> what we had to realize is that we had to go full circle with the stats. We had to actually produce diagrams. We had to actually run massive amounts of simulation with the realest data that we can possibly imagine. And then do, do actual statistics upon that and present these actual statistics. And at that point, we could have a discussion about whether the assumptions that we put into the simulation actually made sense or not because now we had some output to actually discuss that wasn't actually hypothetical so the full circle i would venture to say was in our case at least for me not necessarily obvious it was not necessarily obvious what going full circle actually meant but if i would learn from this mistake i would have to think about it this way i would think that Next time, I will spend a lot, lot more time really trying to figure out what full circle means. And if I can't get stakeholder engagement, I would assume that I haven't gone full circle. And instead, I would then push forward and try to see if I can go full circle, try to find a different kind of deliverable, a different format of the deliverable that actually engages the stakeholders. 
So the sort of litmus test or the sort of watermark is, do you have massive stakeholder engagement? Do you have useful stakeholder engagement? Unfortunately, that's of course not the only checkup we can do because I guess sometimes you also just have very engaged clients or stakeholders, so then they would be engaged regardless of whether you have actually gone full circle. But the key point is really, you need to find something that is deliverable. You need to find something that is deliverable Maybe we can think about it this way. If all of the developers dropped, left the project, you should be able to have tangible results at all times. There should always be a version that is the production version that isn't hypothetical, that isn't a prototype, but actually is something that is deliverable, something that is runnable, something that is public. If everyone left at any point in time, you should have shippable software. Boom, everybody disappears, okay, the latest version is still published, you've got it, it works. It doesn't do all of the fancy things that we want it to do, but at least it works. That, I guess, is the really good test. And we were far from that, right? We had requirements. Because if, if suddenly all of the people had left, what would the stakeholders say? They would say, okay, well, our programmers have developed a bunch of ideas about how to operationalize these things into a simulation. That's not a deliverable, right? That's a massive catastrophe. So. Let me sum up. The key point is this. When developing software, regardless of whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an independent programmer, or you're working for a firm, the single most important thing is that we need to go full circle as quickly as possible. Go full circle. Find a deliverable. Find a format of a deliverable. Find in which way you're going to deliver your actual software. Deliver that and then refine it and refine it and refine it and this is how we get stakeholder engagement And this is how we consistently stay in a state where at any point in time we have working software Do not iterate on requirements do not construct requirements documents and then iterate upon those and iterate upon those You might find yourself in a situation where you spend or where you waste lots and lots of time so instead Find a way of delivering software. Find a way of delivering the software, deliver it, and then iterate upon that. Go full circle as quickly as possible. Please don't repeat my mistake. I'm sure lots of other people before me have repeated it, and I should have really tried to listen to them in order to not waste as much time as I actually did. This was, quite honestly, a really painful experience. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you want more Code Talks like this. Shoot a comment if you agree or disagree. And I'll see you in the next one.